in sports. This is Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Grizz Insider right here on MTN. Alongside the voice of the Grizz, Riley Corcoran, I'm Kyle Hansen, and Riley, we're coming in off a, a big win for the Montana Grizzlies in a statement in a top 20 matchup. Yeah, it was great, Kyle. The FCS game of the week, the lights were on. It kind of had that early playoff feel, even though it was the first week of October, and the Grizz passed the test. I, I think it's uh, not an understatement to say they played their best game of the season, most complete. All three phases kind of worked, to worked together in the same game. Excited to talk about it for the next half hour with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I mean, and what a win because obviously the Idaho State game got them back on track last week. Still some hiccups along the way and not the dominant win people would have wanted. But Davis, from start to finish, felt like they were in control. I think so. And I think the, the, the point you have to go back to to compare those two games would be half yep. Right? The, the halftime feel of Idaho State Montana wasn't the best. It was 7-7. Seven to seven. You weren't quite sure who was going to emerge coming out of the locker room. Obviously, Montana did that. And then they carried that momentum over to UC Davis. And I feel the other difference would be at halftime, and I'm going to get to your halftime interview here in a second, <laughs> but the Grizz were up by one, but it felt like it should have been a heck of a lot more. And Montana really imposed their will in the second half. Your thoughts on halftime and the feel. It was hot down there on the sideline, but you also had a heated head coach you were talking about. Oh, man, it reminded me of being back in Arizona. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Everything was hot. The weather, and then you come over, and, and Bobby Houck, man, fired up. Like, I've just, it's so funny when you see this. And, you know, obviously there were some, some penalties that he probably didn't agree with, and there were some moments that felt like they probably could have been winning by more with the turnovers, too, and things like that. But, yeah, he comes over, he's fired up. And in those moments, it's just as a reporter, you're just kind of sitting there like, all right, well, just let it ride. Well, and the team, I think back Back that up, though. I, yep. I really think, Kyle, I mean, we get the perspective of being there and watching this squad, especially you down on the sideline, is the fire was there. This yes. team played inspired in the game against UC Davis, and that was maybe the biggest takeaway over any of the X's and the O's, and that was really encouraging to see. I agree, because you look at the first drive right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Great drive, fumble on the five-yard line, even, I think, inside the five-yard line. And then, so you start to kind of wonder because there's been these moments where they kind of shoot themselves a foot a little bit, and then the other team takes advantage of it. But this time, they get the stop, score, take the lead, and then it's like, okay, you know, they're re rebounding, then they get all these penalties, they have the late turnover in the fourth quarter when Xavier Harris fumbles it inside the red zone. And so you have these mistakes, but they bounce back and recover, which we weren't really seeing the last few weeks. Uh, great observation. The response is what, it, it, when you talk about a team that wants to grow throughout the year, and this goes back really to week one, week two, when we were talking about the difference between Grizzly football last year compared to this year. They came in on such a high last year that there was not much room to improve, where we've seen it week by week, just steady signs of, okay, they are responding from adversity. That definitely was the case against UC Davis. And then to just, again, impose their will on yep. both sides of the ball, you saw it. I think the second half adjustments, Kyle, on yes. the defensive side of the ball were staggering to see. And UC Davis was flustered. First team all-league quarterback in Miles Hastings. He looked very uncomfortable. And for the Grizz to only allow three points in the second half, I mean, offense should steal the show with who we're going to be talking with on the show and the numbers they put up. But the defensive adjustments in the second half were great. They, re they really was. And so and just to get your thoughts on this, Riley, Obviously, that second half, the defense starts shutting them down. Both offenses kind of stalling a little bit. But what do you think that says about Montana, that they were able to kind of weather that storm, get the home run hit with Eli Gilman, and then the defense kind of lock it down? I think that it shows that they're able to play off of each other. Because in previous years, and even when the Grizzlies were riding high, Kyle, it was more on, okay, the defense has to carry, offense just try and stay in neutral, so to speak. Right. Don't screw it up. Well, it feels like now that there's chemistry between both sides of, okay, first half, we know the offense. You're going to steal the show a little bit. Second half, hey, offense doesn't need to do too much. Let the defense kind of carry the weight. That 85-yard touchdown, that was something else, too, for Eli Gilman to, to break that free, especially when there was no running room, it seemed like, all day before. Right. Well, I mean, and they needed it, too, because yeah. they needed to put it there, the blocked field goal. And some other things happened, and just to see him put away was, you know, it was encouraging for them, especially as they go forward here. So. No question. Big top 20 win and another big matchup coming up this week. It's going to be great. And coming up at the other side of the break, Riley is going to catch up with head coach Bobby Howe for the Talk about the win over the Aggies. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. And welcome back to the Grizz Insider, a massive win for Grizzly football on the road, being a top 20 team. Excited to be joined by head coach Bobby Halk right now. And coach, always nice to get on a plane with a lot of smiling faces. And that was the case. <laughs> what was the mood? What was the vibe like? Locker room, plane ride home afterwards. Yeah, I mean, you were there. It was great. Uh, everybody was having fun. Uh, you should enjoy wins because wins are, wins are hard to get, uh, especially over good football teams on the road. 
And uh, that was the biggest game in FCS football last weekend, and, and the Grizz kind of dominated the contest. They really did. The only top 20 matchup in the country. Grizzlies come out on top in that game, a game that really wasn't even as close as the final score. And we got to go to the first half to start that, Coach, because it turned into a shootout early. And I don't know how many people maybe expected that, being 41 points on the board going into the half. But take us through kind of the first half from your eyes, how you saw it, the momentum swings, and how you guys did go in with the lead, and it felt like it could have been a little bit bigger. Well, I, I was actually thinking on the sideline that if Kyle would ask me about it at halftime that, hey, these two great defenses supposedly and all of a sudden it's just up and down the field and people scoring points. But I thought we settled into it pretty well, in particular on the defensive side after that. I think we just had too much for them. It was fun. Talk about the offensive approach in this game, right? I mean, I think with Clifton McDowell starting, the assumption from opposing teams is, okay, let's load the box, can't run the football. Well, they dared you guys to throw, and you made them pay in a big way. Talk about the passing game and just the offensive approach, how you had to adjust throughout the game. Well, we don't want to be one-dimensional. We want to have balance. We want to be able to throw it. It doesn't matter who we have at quarterback. Uh, we have to be able to run it. We have to be able to pass it. The quarterback piece is evolutionary. It's week to week who we're going to play and how much. And then sometimes it's even in the flow of the game, how it's going. So it's going to be that way for the rest of the season. Obviously, Cliff did a nice job yesterday, and I was, I was happy for him. Collective team effort, but I've got to talk about two individuals that both had their career highs uh, in the game on Saturday. Aaron Fonts made a couple of highlight reel catches. Unbelievable. Maybe it was the being on the Grizz Insider that helped him out with that. And then Keelan White, yet another career high. So he's just t continuing on his tear. Talk about those two guys in particular and just the, the game-winning plays that they were able to make throughout the game Saturday? Well, they're really fine young men. I mean, they're just great guys to, to have around, be around on a daily basis. They work hard in the run game as well as the pass game. Keelan's played great uh, this, this whole month leading up to this game. He just continues to go. But Aaron uh, was fabulous yesterday. Uh, it was great to see him make some highlight reel catches. I mean, it was just really good to see. And when you have that going, the quarterback's confident in him. You know you can move the chains on third down, you take shot plays down the field. They're going to they're gonna make them right. Uh, really good stuff in the passing game. Nine conversions on third down for the Grizzly offense. Let's go to the other side of the ball because, again, we talk about a shootout in the first half, 21-20. In the second half, the adjustments you made stifled UC Davis. First team all-league quarterback in Miles Hastings coming back for them, and he did not want to get hit, it seemed like, throughout the course of the second half. Just to speak to the defensive adjustments you guys made and how uh, great that effort was in the second half for you guys. Yeah, they had a couple of uh, run schemes. They decided to major in the first half that we weren't fitting up particularly well on defense, and we got that shored up, so we took that away. We, we didn't cover great in man the first half. We covered better in our man stuff the second half. We just played better, and then we gave him a couple of zone answers that he hadn't seen the first half, and he struggled with it. Well, no question about it. How about the, the mindset around your team throughout the course of the game? And again, we, we mentioned a little post game, right? It felt like a playoff game, just in the all the pomp and circumstance around it. Maybe not so much in your guys' locker room. You guys focused on the task at hand, but just the jubilation afterwards from your team, and and the mindset throughout the course of the game. Talk us through it on the sidelines. Well, you know, all that, all that external stuff really is not productive for us to focus on, so we don't. But our guys were locked in on that game. Uh, we had an edge to us that I, I like, maybe a little too much in my corner, but uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes sometimes. But it, we were an edgy, angry football team on the field and, and played that way, and it was, uh, it was a thing of beauty to watch all three phases working together collaborating to get the win. Well, let's just say the tone was set early. How about we settle on that one, Coach? From the <laughs> opening drive, the tone was set for the yeah. Grizzlies. Final Gosh. question, kind of a two-part question into one. Kyle's going to talk with Junior Bergen on the other side of the break, but just your thoughts on, obviously, what Junior brings to your team, how he's been playing this year, and uh, just a collective special teams question, how you thought everybody performed in the game against UC Davis. Well, the, the kicking game was really good. We dominated the field position battle. We had two, we had two takeaways, had big returns. It was... It was quite a game for our special teams unit, so I'm proud of those guys. Junior's doing a great job in that area, within the offense. He's a versatile guy. Um, he's, he's getting the ball in his hands a multitude of ways, and you know we just got to keep him healthy. Grizz with a massive win on the road at UC Davis. Grizz Insider continues on the other side of the break. Well, Kyle Hansen will catch up with Junior first. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway.
Welcome back to the Grizz Insider, and we're joined by junior wide receiver Junior Bergen. And Junior, thanks for being here, man. Yes, thanks for having me. Absolutely. You guys coming off the big win over UC Davis, and you're getting a chance to kind of see the wide receiver room kind of blossom a little bit with Keelan, you, and Aaron. So just from your perspective, what was Davis like and seeing you guys come out with that big win and you guys contributing? Um, it was nice. Uh, we expect those things out of all of us. Um, you know, we got a lot of big playmakers. We've talked about it for a while about the playmakers we have in that room, and um, you know how we're just kind of just getting started. We want to want to keep attacking uh, each day and each game, each practice, uh, giving our, putting our best foot forward and just, just going to work. You make a great point about how we've been talking about the playmaking ability of this wide receiver room, and we're, we're starting to see these guys break through a little bit. So from your perspective as their teammates, seeing Keelan and Aaron come out with uh, career-high games, just what's it like kind of seeing them kind of crack through here? <sighs> I'm proud of them, you know. Uh, those guys work their butts off, and, you know, I see all those plays that they make on Saturdays. They make those things during the week and during fall camp, spring ball, all that stuff, and, uh, you know, it's happy to see that all coming to fruition. You see the, that hard work that they've been kind of putting in. So, like, as you've noticed it, because obviously you've played from right where the get-go when you were a freshman, what have you seen those guys do that's kind of led them to this moment uh, in having kind of breakout season? The way that they prepare, they, they practice hard, they make sure uh, they're doing their 111th, and then, you know, they, they watch a lot of film. I know both of them watch a good amount of film, and then, yeah, they just, they just prepare, man. They, they're ready to go. Aaron's probably one of the freakiest, freakiest uh, athletes I've ever been around. He's just like a flat-out freak, and it's nice to see him just kind of break out and do his thing. And then Keelan's been around, and you know, Keelan's getting his opportunity, and he's, he's breaking out as well. And I, I just love to see it from those guys. Absolutely. Well, for you, Junior, obviously the offense, you guys it showed some new wrinkles against Davis. You know, Clifton's showing off his arm a little bit. We talked about how much he likes to run. So working with him, working with Sam, how's it been like kind of working with these guys and their varying skill sets because you guys have been utilizing them well lately? Yeah. Um, you know, those two are both highly competitive, and you know when they go out there, we know that they're going to give it their all, and they're going to, uh, you know, just try to try to make sure that everyone's ready to go. And you know, I, I have faith in both of those guys that no matter which one we go with, uh, they're ready to roll. And Clifton, just this last game, speak to his performance, showing off that arm. You know, some of those passes to Keelan for the touchdown and Aaron were big throws. Yeah. Just, how have you seen maybe him grow in this program? I just see him getting more comfortable back there. Cliff's a playmaker. He's he's able to make plays with his feet, with his arm. You know, you see the one with. Keelan where he kind of gets out of the pocket and, and finds Keelan and then that's the same thing with Aaron he play kind of breaks down he gets out of the pocket and finds him and you know I've I've believed in his arm since you know I've met him and uh it's finally time for him to show that off to everyone else so. definitely and so for you junior where have you seen your progression kind of this year as well because you had a career game last week against Idaho State in the receiving game you like we just talked about played since you were a freshman at running back then moved back to wide receiver just where have you seen maybe your growth from sophomore year to junior year as you're now kind of one of the vets on this team? I just try to be, become more consistent. As a younger guy, you kind of just go with the flow. And then when you're older, I guess, and I'm a junior now, so I gotta kind of got to lead by example and make sure like everyone's ready to go, everyone's going. You know, whether or not plays are being called for me or I'm making my plays, I got to make sure to keep the team up and make sure everyone's ready to go. And your growth in the return game as well, because, I mean, you had the one punt return yesterday that set you guys up deep in uh, Davis territory. It just seems like every play... You know, you're dodging tackles. It just seems it takes like five guys to bring you down. Where have you seen growth in the return game as well? Because that's been a huge weapon for you this year. I don't know. I just, I just like with the balls in my hand. I try to try to make something happen. Uh, you never know when your opportunity is going to come. And, uh, you know, when it does come, I just try to make sure I'm prepared and ready to go. And we, we see the highlights, but what's it like in the moment when you're, you know, dodging tackles and slipping? Like, how, how have you had that, like, keen awareness? Because you've had that since high school. Like, how have you been able to make that work? I don't know. I guess it's kind of natural. It's just you kind of see things happening and, you know, make cuts that kind of happen before the hole opens and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything really to it. It just happens, it's I just guess. Just natural ability, right? Yeah. Do you, do you ever watch a highlight back and just go, wow, how did I do that? Or are you just used to it at this point? Yeah, I guess I am used to it. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, he's humble. It's all good. So, <laughs> Well, for you, Junior, obviously you guys get the big win sitting at 5-1. and one. Got the big game against Idaho coming up this next week, and then you'll head into the bye. So looking at the Vandals, just what do you guys got to do to keep this momentum rolling and, and keep this good energy going? Um, yeah, the Idaho's a good team. Uh, they got a bunch of good players on that team. Uh, we know them from, from last year, and uh, you know, we've, we've, we've been down there, I think with my freshman year. Um, it's a tough place to play at, so we gotta, we got to make sure we prepare, um, starting really today, and then um, all throughout the week and make sure we're ready to go come Saturday. No doubt. Well, Junior, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on the season so far. And coming up next, Riley Corker will rejoin the show to look ahead to the Idaho Vandals.
Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. And welcome back to the Grizz Insider. Great show so far. Getting ready now, Kyle, for a big time matchup. It's a top 15 battle. The Grizz and the Vandals, the battle for the Little Brown Stein. Before we talk about it, we ask Coach Houck his thoughts on the matchup. Yeah, it's a big game in uh, FCS football, maybe the big game uh, of the week. So it should be a great, great uh, contest over there. They're having a great season. Certainly they've got a good football team. You know, a year ago we were ranked number two in the country and they came in here and beat us. You know, it was the first time Idaho had beaten Montana, I think, since 2000 or something. So big win for them to come in here and get us. They ended up getting seven wins and getting in the playoffs eventually. This should be a hotly contested game. I'm, I'm assuming they'll be favored in it and probably should be. We're going to go to work this week and, and uh, try to get ready for this game and see if we can't get over there and steal one. Well, Kyle, the matchup we've all been waiting for is finally mm -hmm. here. And both teams come in with 5-1 records. For the most part, did their part to make this national TV, national primetime game. Living up to the billing, just your thoughts overall on this matchup uh, finally coming to fruition here in mid-October. It's, it's, it's an exciting matchup because it's now a relevant matchup. Yeah. You know, no disrespect to past teams, but Last year when Idaho beat Montana, it finally gave this rivalry some life because Coach Houck, as we know, doesn't really talk about rivalries outside of the Bobcats or like doesn't refer to like some of the other schools as rivals. But he does always mention that Idaho is a rival and they're old, one of their oldest rivals as well, along with MSU. But it's not a rivalry when Montana was just beating them and beating them badly for years on end when they came back to the FCS or the occasional meeting. So last year, Idaho beating Montana was big for this rivalry and big for the conference just because the Vandals have that fan base and people want to see that. Well, and really, Idaho is not stopped their upward trajectory, right? That win against Montana kind of made them relevant, yep. and then they put that into a playoff appearance. Not only that, though, the buzz they got in the offseason, right? To, to be a preseason top 10 team, go on the road, beat Nevada right away, up 17 nothing on Cal. What's kind of your takeaways on their season so far? Obviously, a big win against Sacramento State, too. They've lived up to the hype, and they've only continued to go on that upward trend since they beat Montana here a year ago. You're correct. They lived up to the hype. They're as good as advertised. It was kind of my takeaway looking at them yeah. throughout the year is just they, they came in with all these high expectations and were turning a lot of those guys from last year when they did beat the Grizz. And they've played the part so far. They got the FBS win. They almost had two. And then they get the big win over Sac State to start conference play. And that's huge, especially to start conference play because that could be one where you lose and then there's questions and things pop up like that. So after this latest win over Cal Poly and they're getting ready for this, they're just, you know, the offense, you can't, uh, you can't knock that off because just of how they've carried over their success from last year. And you can't blame their schedule either. They already have a ranked win over Eastern Washington. There's only five teams in the FCS that have two ranked wins. Idaho is one of them. Let's go personnel-wise. Yep. Offensively, you can go a lot of different directions. There's a lot to like about the Vandals when it comes to Giovanni McCoy at quarterback, Anthony Woods, the leading rusher in the league, or, yep. oh, by the way, maybe the top two of the top receivers. So what stands out? What maybe pops off the page when looking at the Vandal offense? I think the running back, honestly. Yeah. and The way Anthony Woods is kind of breaking out this year, and he, he was pretty solid for them a year ago, but the way he has started to become a huge factor because we saw what Hayden Hatton could do last year and Jermaine Jackson, Giovanni McCoy from 2021 to 22, completely changed his game at the quarterback position. So now that they have a running game to mix in, they're they're just dynamic, you know what I mean? Because last year they were this pass-heavy team, and this year they can kind of balance it out. And when you have a guy like him, I mean, 10 touchdowns this year, like you mentioned, leads the league, and that offsets some of the others. But it's crazy because just that offense being the most efficient offense in the league, and there's a reason why they're good everywhere. Well, atmosphere rivalry, that aspect that comes into it, uh, what are you expecting as far as atmosphere in the Kibbe Dome? It, to me, a late kickoff, 8:30 Mountain Time for that, but all the eyes of the nation are going to be on this match. Just your thought on the atmosphere? I think the atmosphere is going to be great. I yeah. think it's going to be a sold-out atmosphere. I think there's going to be a good contingent of Grizz fans just in proximity. I think there's going to be a lot of Idaho fans. And, I mean, they're, they're one of the best teams in the country, and I think they're ready to prove it. We cannot wait for Saturday. The Grizz involved in the FCS Game of the Week in consecutive weekends. We'll wrap up the show next. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to the Grizz Insider, and Riley, I'm, I think we're all just buzzing to get to this game against Idaho for the Grizzlies, and you know, Hayden Hatton, we didn't talk about him much, but he was the preseason offensive player of the year. It's going to be an interesting matchup on Saturday. Much like their team, he's also lived up to the hype. He leads the big sky in receiving yards, and Grizzly secondary has stepped up in a big way, Kyle, the last couple of weeks. This will be their biggest test of the season Saturday night. Absolutely. Grizzlies on the road again this Saturday at the Idaho Vandals. Battle for the Little Brown Stein, and it's going to be a great game, and we'll be back here next week to recap cap the game and look at everything from that rivalry game. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.